Charlie, where do we begin? We're talking about the Great Reset. Yeah, I mean, first, this is an intimidating topic for a lot of people. And I have done a lot of research and study into this for the last year, year and a half in particular. And it's intimidating because when you just read the website of the people that are trying to execute the Great Reset, you feel like you're reading a conspiracy theory. And I think that's actually part of the strategy, yes. is that they lead with the stuff that you won't even believe, and then they're able to say, like, oh, it's not even a conspiracy theory because there is no way that it could actually be real. Um, and this is affecting all of our lives in more ways than one. And, you know, Jack, you and I were texting back and forth, I think, right near our Turning Point USA America Fest, right near Christmas. And I said, Jack, I really want to do something special when I come back, you know, to your amazing church. And you had the idea to talk about the Great Reset and to dive into it because it could be really complex, but it doesn't have to be. And the, the, the way I want to start, though, Jack, is to kind of frame the players that are behind this. So we've all heard the term globalists. Uh, these are people that do not believe in the sovereignty of nations. Uh, these are people that don't believe in borders. They don't believe there should be any difference between America or Brazil or Sierra Leone, that the world needs to come together in a borderless society. Jack, you're going to go into depth of what, how the scriptures actually you know, prophesy yeah. this uh, in amazing detail. So the globalists, they look at themselves as trying to micro-engineer your behavior, the world, your decisions, and in particular, let's just be blunt, they want to play God because they don't believe in God. And right. so we, everyone here tonight believes in two things. And you might have different politics. You might have different ways of looking at the world. We believe there is a God and you are not him. That's is that right. right? We believe those two <laughs> things tonight? Good start. That's a nice starting yeah, point, absolutely. right? absolutely. At the World Economic Forum, the globalist setting, they believe neither of those things. That's right. They do not believe there is a God. And they believe if there was a God, it's me. Titan of industry, Jeff Bezos, Hollywood actor, head of state. So that's a huge difference, right? So we start from a philosophical approach of one of humility and one that is waiting for God's grace to come down to us. They look at one as one of will. I am going to make the world as I want it, and I am going to be in charge. And that really is a satanic and good versus evil struggle that we see from the very beginning of the Bible. So this convenes actually in a place. So every winter, uh, the richest people on the planet, heads of state, actors, they meet in Switzerland in a town called Davos. You've probably heard of this before. Uh, usually they'll do kind of market commentary from Davos, Switzerland, uh, right near the border of Liechtenstein. Really nice, you know, beautiful area if you guys ever visit it. Um, less important about where it is, but more important what actually happens there. Um, for the last couple of years, they've really become more and more organized, and they've become more vocal and more clear about the world that they are trying to usher in. Um, and they were kind of always struggling and wrestling. You go back to look at the tapes of 2017, 2018, 2019, before the Chinese coronavirus, they were really, they were unable to make the argument of the bridge. So they knew where we were, and they knew where they wanted to go, but they were always stopping short of how to get there. Because they're like, huh, Western society is super rich and prosperous and has private property rights and has borders. How are we actually going to connect the two of them? So the man who is the chairman of the World Economic Forum is an individual by the name of Klaus Schwab. So if you are like in central casting of a Hollywood film, Bond villain, this is Klaus Schwab. Let's it's put a picture true. of Klaus Schwab up on the screen, by the way. Have you ever seen the recent James Bond film of Blowfoot? Th that's Klaus Schwab. Right? No, it gets better. So um, he also talks in this like super baritone he German does. accent. And I think we have a video of Klaus Schwab really quick. Just to get an idea of kind of who you're dealing with here really quick. When I mention our names like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But... Um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and mm. I would know that half of this cabinet or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet are for our actually young global leaders of the world. Great. And that's true in Argentina. Oh, wow. What is that noise? Yeah. I don't Sorry. know. That's true in Argentina as well. 
It's true in Argentina and uh, it's true in France now. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the president, with the yeah, young good. global leader. Okay, you guys, so, but good. Let me translate. I know it's like this understated thing. What he's saying there, he's openly admitting, I know it could be hard to understand the you know, English-German you know, accent. He's openly admitting the World Economic Forum has taken over entire governments.